The Jack Benny Program. Quality of product is essential to continuing success. <laughs> Let that historic chant remind you that year in, year out, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. It takes fine tobacco to make a fine cigarette. And LSMFT, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. In a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. And season after season, at market after market, independent tobacco experts, auctioneers, buyers, and warehousemen can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. Fine, light, naturally mild tobacco. No doubt about it. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And fine tobacco means real deep down smoking enjoyment for you. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. <laughs> with Barry Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, we take you out to Jack Benny's house in Beverly Hills, where we find Jack and Rochester in the garage. Hmm. I can't understand why the car won't start. Try it again, Rochester. Yes, sir. Try it again, Roger. Okay. Uh, try it again, Roger. Where do I put the door back on? Okay. Rochester. Rochester, it didn't start. No, but the door stayed on. <laughs> oh, good, good. I can't, I can't understand what's wrong. Maybe the motor's worn out. Oh, no, that's impossible. The speedometer only says 88,000 miles. Oh, come now, boss. We pushed it further than that. <laughs> well, you better go up and go in the house and call Mr. Harris and tell him to pick me up on his way to the studio. Eh? Oh, I did that before we came out to the garage. Oh, then you knew there was something wrong with the... Rochester, did you use my car last night? Well, uh, uh... Rochester, I just found a bobby pin on the front seat. A bobby pin? Yeah. <laughs> what are you laughing at? There's only two of us here, and it ain't mine. <laughs> well, it isn't mine either. Rochester, you used my car last night to take your girl out. Uh-huh. Well, how did it go? Oh, very good, very good. Her like a kitten. That's funny, and today it won't even start. Oh, you mean the car. <laughs> yes, the car. How did it go? Oh, fine, boss, fine. Until I lost a tire off the front wheel. You lost a tire? Why didn't you come back home? Well, the rim got caught in the trolley car tracks, and I had to go all the way to Pasadena before I could make a left turn. <laughs> Pasadena? Yeah, and on the way back, we got stalled right in the middle of the Santa Claus Lane Parade. You and your girl, huh? What happened? Nothing. We prefer Mulholland Drive. <laughs> oh, well, Roger, in the future, when you want to go out joyriding, borrow your friend's car. You know who I mean, Sam. He loaned it to you once before. Oh, well, Sam ain't got that car anymore. He's got two motorcycles now. Oh. Traded his car in, eh? No, he backed into a buzzsaw. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Did Sam get hurt? No, but if he hadn't leaned over to put down the window, he'd have been twins. <laughs> well, look, Rochester, there's no use working with this any longer. Okay, Jackson, I'm here. Be right with you, Phil. So long, Rochester. I'll see you after the broadcast. Yes, sir. 
Yeah, I'm sorry to take you out of your way, Phil, but I couldn't get my car started. You know, Jackson, when you bought that car, it's too bad you didn't wait just one more year. They came out with a wonderful improvement. Yeah? What was it? The Pony Express. <laughs> all right, all right. Come on, let's get to the studio. Say, this car really runs nice. Well, you know me, Jackson. Nothing but the best for Harris. Oh, boy, what a fancy dashboard. What are all those buttons for? Well, that's a radio. I push this button and get Australia. I push this button and get London. This button, China. This button, France. And on up to eight countries. Gee, my radio, I've only got three buttons. Anaheim, Azusa, and Cucamonga. <laughs> I can only get Anaheim when I'm in Azusa. How do you get Cucamonga? Short wave. They got a wonderful program from there, too. John's Other Smudge Pot. I never miss it, you know. Oh, boy. Phil, this is really a swell car. How much does it cost, Phil? $3,500. $3,500. Gee, I wish I had two shows. <laughs> Hey, Phil. Phil, the traffic light is changing. I see it. I see it. Watch it, will you, kid? Oh, Martha. Look who's sitting in that car. Jack Benny. Well, isn't that a coincidence? Three weeks ago, we were standing here, and he drove by then, too. Yes. Isn't he handsome? <laughs> Martha, what are you crying about? Well, I can't help it. When Mr. Benny was in vaudeville, he was my husband's favorite comedian. Well, that's nothing to cry about. I was thinking of my husband. He's been dead for 40 years. <laughs> oh, say, Martha, I've just noticed who's sitting next to Mr. Benny. Who? Look. Well, box back my coat and button my shoes if it isn't ham hocks and turnip greens. <laughs> What a thrill. Let's go over to the car and ask them for her autograph. Oh, no, Emily. They'll think we're trying to pick them up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Gee, those, those two old ladies are sweet. You know, Phil, I saw them at the football game yesterday. Oh, did you go, Jackson? There was such a mob out there. How'd you ever park your car? Oh, I didn't take my car. It was such a nice day, I decided to swim. <laughs> Fortunately, it was downstream, you know. Good night, played by the orchestra. Now, ladies and okay, gentlemen... Okay, Don, okay, we're here. I'm sorry we were late, but I couldn't get my car started, and then we got held up in traffic. Oh, well, that's all right, Jack. We filled in with a couple of orchestra numbers. Good, good, Don, but who led the band? Frankie. Frankie? What does he know about music? Are you kidding, Jackson? Frankie's a natural. He was born with a banjo on his knee. <laughs> he was? Yeah, they had to operate on him before they could get his pants on. <laughs> <laughs> Keep that up and you'll be another Carmen Lombardo, Phil. I'll settle for anybody. <laughs> now, Don, uh, Mary is still in Palm Springs, so when we do our play tonight, we'll have to... Hello, get... Mr. Benny. 
Hello, Dennis. Hello, Phil. Hiya, kid. Hello, Don. Hello, Dennis. Hello, Mary. I guess she's mad at me. <laughs> Dennis, she's not mad at you. Mary isn't here. She's in Palm Springs. Oh. Now, Don. Well, if she isn't mad, why doesn't she call me up? Well, she has no reason to call. Dennis, take my word for it. If Mary were here, she'd say hello to you. Oh, yeah? Well, I wouldn't even answer her. <laughs> all right, all right, don't answer her. Now, Don. Yes, Jack? As you know, two weeks ago, we were going to do our version of The Killers. But we had to postpone it until tonight. Who does she think she is, anyway? <laughs> Dennis, I told you, Mary's in Palm Springs. Now, will you please forget it? Okay. Oh, say, Jack, uh, before you tell me about the play tonight, do you mind if I talk to you about a very delicate subject? Delicate subject? What is it, Don? The quartet is here, ready to do the commercial. Don, uh, look, uh, Don, I want to talk to you a minute. Not in anger. Look, kid. Look, Don, just a nice, friendly chat. Sit down. Sit down, Don. Well, there isn't any chair here. Well, sit on the quartet. <laughs> Go ahead. Get up. You're hurting them. <laughs> now, Don, let's get one thing straight. The quartet is through. Finish. Listen, Jack, give them one more chance. And if you don't like what they've prepared for today, I'll never bother you again. Don, look. Come I on, boys, Il Trovatore. I don't want Il Trovatore. L.S. M.F.T. L.S. M.F.T. Don, Il Trovatore. Lucky strike means fine tobacco. Yes, lucky strike means fine tobacco. Don, Il Trovatore is not for. Il Son de la Prezzi. Don, 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 boys, Don, fellas, boys, Don, look, Don, this doesn't... Yes, fine tobacco. Don, look, no good, believe me. Did you hear that applause, Jack? They were sensational. Don, I don't care if they applaud all night. Opera has no place on this program. All right, Jack, then listen to this. Don, I've Take had Take it, a... boys. Holiday for strings. Holiday for strings. Don. I do. Wait a minute. 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 Don. Don. Don, I've had enough. I can't stand it any longer. Where's that contract? Here it is. There. That settles that. <laughs> oh, Jack, I don't blame you if you feel that way about the quartet. That's the best thing to do. Tear up the contract. Their contract? That was yours. What? <laughs> hey, man, I guess that'll hold him for a while. Oh, 
What a lovely world this world will be With a world of love in store For you, for me, forevermore I'm yours, you're mine For you, for me, forevermore, sung by Dennis Day. Very good, Dennis. Hello, Mary. <laughs> what, what was that? I'm giving her one more chance. Oh, go sit down. Okay. Tonight, for our... Not on the quartet. <laughs> Find a chair. I wish Mary was here and I was in Palm Springs. And now... I wouldn't say hello to you either. Oh, quiet. <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, tonight, as our feature attraction, we're going to do our version of Mark Hellinger's thrilling, exciting, universal international picture, the famous Hemingway story, The Killers. This is the story of two gunmen who walk into a little lunchroom looking for a guy called the Swede. It's midnight, and the lunchroom is deserted except for one lonely customer. Well, I think I'll have a bite to eat and then go home. Yeah, I wish I could close up and go home myself. This place is quieter than a coal mine. <laughs> kind of a dreary night, too. Yeah. Say, Charlie, uh, don't the Swede usually drop in about this time? Uh-huh. Hasn't been in now for two or three weeks. Understand he's sick in bed. Oh, a Democrat, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I miss him, too. Used to stay here for hours. Just sitting by the jukebox, listening to the Missouri Waltz. Now, <laughs> uh, what do you have to eat? Oh, I don't know. Uh, How would you like some squaw baked in wine? Nah. You got any ham hocks stewed in bourbon? <laughs> now we're all out of ham hocks. Good, just bring me the juice. <laughs> okay. Say, Curly, next week when you come here, you won't know this joint. It's gonna be real ritzy. New curtains and drapes and rugs on the floor. Nice new lampshades and everything. This lunchroom is gonna be beautiful. Well, it's about time this joint looks like the sweat band out of the Brown Derby. <laughs> Well, don't worry, I'm going to fix everything. In fact, I've already hired the interior decorators. Say, Curly, hurry up and finish eating, will you? It's such a nasty night, I want to close up and go home. I'll be through in a minute. How about a napkin? Use the drapes, I'm getting new ones. <laughs> yes, sir, I can just see the way this place is going to... Hmm. What's the matter, Charlie? Look out the window. Two guys just stepped off the curb and are crossing the street. I never seen them before. Yeah. They look kind of tough. Hey, I'm getting out of here. No, 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 don't go. I don't want to be here alone. <laughs> One of them guys it looks like Edward G. Robinson. Hey, look, they're coming this way. Yeah. <laughs> What 
uh, what'll it be, gentlemen? I say, what'll it be, gentlemen? Gentlemen, what'll it be? What are you shaking for, blue eyes? <laughs> it ain't cold in here. I'm getting ready to close up, gentlemen, so if you want something to eat, you better order it. Hey, uh, Slugger. What is it, Eddie? <laughs> Blue Eyes is in a hurry. Maybe we ought to slow him down. Yeah, down. <laughs> now, look, gentlemen, uh, I don't want no trouble. What'll you have? You can have some ham and eggs or some corned beef hash. Or a mixed green salad. Ouch! I don't like salad. <laughs> now, look, mister, I want to close up this joint so you better order or get out of here, because if you don't, I'll call the police. Well, did you hear that, slugger? Blue Eyes is going to call the police. Yes, I am. Well, one move out of you, and I'll fill you so full of holes you look like a chiss-sweet sandwich. <laughs> That's Swiss cheese. Now, don't tell me how to get a laugh. <laughs> what? It amuses Slugger. Yes. <laughs> now, see here, mister. I want to ask you a question. Would you follow... Now, please? look, bright boy, I ask the questions around here, see? You just answer them and do as I tell you, see? If not, you'll get hurt, see? Now, get me something to eat, see? And be quick about it, look. <laughs> look. Where? Oh, shut up, <laughs> Now, wait a minute. I don't have to stand for this. I'm a citizen. I pay my taxes. I got my rights, and you, can, you can't come in here and push me around. No, we can't, huh? No, you... Wait a minute. What are you reaching your back pocket for? Just my handkerchief. Your handkerchief? Yeah. You must have a bad cold. <laughs> yeah. I just took those shots for it. Keep that up and you'll be another Phil Harris. <laughs> now, look, will you fellas... Put... Wait a minute. Now I know who you guys are. You're the killers. You're looking for the Swede. Did you hear that, Slugger? Bright Boy thinks we're looking for the Swede. Well, ain't we been looking for no Swede? No. <laughs> now, Bright Boy, we ain't looking for no Swede. We came in here to talk to you. Me? Yeah, you. We heard you're going to get this dump redecorated. Yes, I am, but... What's that got to do with you? Well, we want to know something. What? Who are you getting your chance from? <laughs> chintz? Yeah. And the silk lining for your drapes. I'm not going to have them lined. Ha, <laughs> You hear that? Now, listen, bright boy. You're going to have drapes, and you're going to have them lined. You're getting them from us, see? I can't get them from you. I'm buying all my curtains and drapes from Johnson and Company. Right on the corner. Johnson ain't there anymore. <laughs> you mean to say that... What's that? Johnson, he just passed by. <laughs> Gee, rumors are flying and so is Johnson. Well, you guys can't frighten me. I'm buying my curtains, drapes, and chins from anybody I like, see? And that gun in your hand ain't scaring me either, see? I don't even think you can shoot straight. No, I can't, huh? See that row of plates up there? Yeah. Well, watch this. And the plate next to it. And the plate on the other side. Ha <laughs> ha! You missed! <laughs> hmm. I put a curve on that one. Yeah, well, I'm not afraid of you now. You took three shots before and three shots now. You're out of bullets. Uh, no, I ain't, bright boy. This is an ever-sharp gun. 
<laughs> it's got a six-month supply of lead. I should have known with that deep pocket clip. Hey, you know the gun I have only shoots six times. Look. Here, I'll show you. See? Hey, that's a pretty nice gun you got there. You're darn right it is. Now, come on, now. Up with your hands, both of you. Oh, you want to shoot it out, huh? Well, take that. Ha, ha, ha. You missed me twice. <laughs> now, you take this. Oh, you got me, Slugger. You got me. I'm dying, Slugger. I knew the day would come. I knew I couldn't get away with it. Everything's getting dark. I can't see. I'm dying, Slugger. They finally got me. Me. Little Caesar. <laughs> Goodbye, Slugger. I'm dying. I'm dying. Dying. Well, fall down, you big ham. <laughs> Help. Oh! Mm. <laughs> well, how do you like that? He fell on the quartet. Come on, Curly, let's go home. Jack will be back in just a minute, but first, here is my good friend, Mr. L.A. Speed Rage. Common sense will tell you, in a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. And Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Mr. George Alfred Webster, independent tobacco warehouseman of Durham, North Carolina, has seen millions of pounds of tobacco bought and sold at auction, and he said... At market after market, at auction after auction, I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike buy fine tobacco. Tobacco that makes one grand smoke. I've smoked Lucky's myself for 29 years. Year in, year out, independent tobacco experts like Mr. Webster, men who spend their lives buying, selling, and handling tobacco, can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. Fine, light, naturally mild tobacco. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So remember... L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And fine tobacco means real deep down smoking enjoyment for you. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed. So free and easy on the draw. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank Edward G. Robinson for appearing with us tonight through the courtesy of the Thalia Productions, producers of that soon-to-be-released picture, The Red House. We'll be with you next Sunday at the same time. Good night, Mary. Good night, Mary. Good night, Herman. <laughs> Herman? I'm mad at Mary. Oh, yes, yes, I forgot. Good night. <laughs> This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.